Good morning and welcome. This morning we're, we will be beginning we will be beginning new service music. Um, so you might want to put a marker in number 193. That is the Gloria for the set of service music that we'll be using and the holy and everything will follow 193. This is not completely new to you, it, it will sound familiar. The readings for this morning can be found at number 1175. 1175. Opening song this morning, number 635, Let All Things Now Living, 635. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we want to welcome all of you who have come to celebrate with us this 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In a very special way, we want to welcome our visitors, and we want to welcome those who are watching us live stream today. Let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now let us give glory to God.
Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Now would those going to children's liturgy please come forward. My dear children, today we are going to learn the importance of saying thank you to all those who show us care and love, and especially to God for all he gives us through the gift of creation, family, and our daily needs that he provides. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we ask you to look with love upon your children gathered here this morning. Help them to always recognize that all that they are and all that they have are gifts from you. May they always be grateful for all that they have. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And now you may go to children's liturgy. Go and listen to the word of God. Go and listen to the word of God. The words of everlasting life. God has the words of everlasting life. A reading from the book of Second, book, second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, now I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other god except to the Lord. The word of the Lord.
second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, in today's first reading, Naaman the Syrian comes to thank Elisha for curing him and to profess faith in the God of Israel. In today's gospel, Jesus cures 10 lepers, but only one comes back to thank him. This story then suggests multiple themes. The first theme is faith. The 10 lepers were making an act of faith in Jesus by asking him to heal them. Jesus then asked them to prove their faith in action by going and showing themselves to the priests. They did and were cured. We know that Jesus worked many miracles of healing in the Gospels. In almost every case, at the very least, people had to request to be healed or for someone else to be healed. Asking Jesus for healing was at least an implicit act of faith. They had to believe that Jesus had the power to heal or there was no point in asking. If we are people of faith, we need to have the confidence to ask God for what we need. 
Jesus said, ask and you will receive. Although Jesus also tells us that God knows what we need, we should not expect to receive if we do not ask. Although our prayers are not always answered in the way we would like, asking always at least deepens our relationship with God. The second theme is gratitude or ingratitude. This is the most striking theme in today's gospel. Jesus cured 10 lepers, but only one came back to thank him. More importantly, the one who came back was a Samaritan, a foreigner. The other nine probably were so thrilled to be cured that they went off to celebrate their cure. They might not have been all that ungrateful. They might just have forgotten to be grateful. Forgetfulness of God is a major problem today. As important as it is to ask God for what we need and even want, it is even more important to thank God for what we have, since we believe that all that we ha are and have are God's gifts to us. Of course, God's greatest gift to us is Jesus, who makes all love possible. This is why the Eucharist is so important to Catholics. The word Eucharist means thanksgiving. In other words, every Eucharist, every Mass, is a celebration of thanksgiving. Most of us are not grateful enough for all that we have. Last Sunday, we had a visitor from Uganda. When I talked to him at Coffee and Donuts, he was amazed at all that we have here in the United States. What a difference it would make in our lives if we were all grateful for what we have instead of bemoaning what we don't have. Equally importantly, if we live lives of gratitude, we want to share our gifts, gifts that God has given us, with others. We want to share our time, our talents, our resources with others. My brothers and sisters, to understand the gift of healing they received, we have to understand leprosy in the time of Jesus. In those times, people believed leprosy could be highly contagious. Therefore, if someone was thought to be a leper, he or she could no longer live within the family or community. They literally were outcasts. And since family and community were everything for the Jews, they were the living dead in that society. When Jesus healed their physical illness, he gave them back their life. They were restored to their home, their family, and their community. In his first letter, St. John wrote that the person who does not love is among the living dead. It is equally true that those who are not loved or do not feel loved are also among the living dead. Therefore, it is imperative for us as Christians not only to love others, but also to help them experience love. It is often said that we cannot give what we do not have. However, when it comes to love, we do not have what we do not give. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Now let us pray that God will help us to love one another. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may we be persistent in our work for peace and justice for everyone, especially the invisible and forgotten among us, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace in Ukraine, that God will guide those waging war to end meaningless suffering and restore peace and protect and sustain the innocent people in the path of destruction, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees and those seeking asylum worldwide, may God help them find a safe place to begin a new life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to gun violence that plagues our cities and neighborhoods, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those whose lives have been tragically altered by Hurricane Ian, may God give them grace and strength that they may move forward with their families and communities, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, especially Jack Clark, who died this past week, and Steve Schultz, for whom this Mass is offered, may God welcome them to the heavenly banquet, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions, we recall now in silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, our help and guide, may your love, make your love the foundation of our lives. May our love for you express itself in our eagerness to do good for others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gift bearers this morning are members of the Bergen family.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, your blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese, the little flower, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by our divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Mercedes Club is collecting travel size toiletries for the homeless throughout October. Please place your donations in the containers at the doors. Details in the Teresian. Would you like to meet and make new parishioners feel at home at Little Flower? If so, please consider being a mentor for one of our new parishioners. Sign-up sheets are located at the church doors to volunteer. Contact information is in the Teresian. Thank you for your consideration. There will be no coffee and donuts this morning. As you heard in the prayers of the petitions today, our parishioner, Jack Clark, died this past Tuesday. He was 92 years old. Jack graduated from Little Flower School in 1944. At least as long as I've been here, as long as he was able, he was always at Mass every weekend, either 5 p.m. or 9.30, sitting over in this section over here. Jack is also the father of our parishioner, Andrea Arvin. Visitation will be today at Shirley Brothers Washington Memorial Chapel from 2 to 4. His funeral will be here at Little Flower tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. So please pray for Jack and his family. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our closing song is number 627, Sing a New Song to the Lord, number 627, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3.